Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video. Welcome to another tutorial about Gutenberg. In this video, we're gonna finally take a look on how to create our first custom block. Let's get started. This episode is brought to you by SkySilk. If you're looking for a powerful, reliable, and affordable VPS in the cloud, SkySilk.com is the answer for you. Look no further for amazing, powerful cloud computing machine starting as low as $1 per month. Click the link in the description below to learn more. First of all, Gutenberg is based on JavaScript, mostly based on React. So in order to create a custom block, we need to create a new JavaScript file. I'm currently using the 2019 WordPress theme as a base, but you can use whatever you want. You can use a child theme, your own custom theme or a custom plugin. Let's access the JavaScript folder and let's create a new file called Gutenberg CTA block. But of course you can call this file however you want. It doesn't really matter. Inside this file, we can start defining our own custom block. So in order to create a custom block, WordPress offers some JavaScript API that we can tap and the API command that we want to tap, it's called a register block type. And in the register block type, we need to specify a lot of things, basically all the logic, all the edits, all the attributes, the custom functions, everything that we want to have in our custom block is going to be inside these method. The first attribute, the first parameter of this method has to be a string and the string has to be composed by a namespace. And then after a forward slash, the actual block name, or we could call it actually the block slug. Always remember namespace forward slash and block slug. This is a required structure for this unique block name, otherwise it won't work. So I'm gonna use my alicad namespace and then the block slug. I'm gonna call it like custom-cta, something that will most likely not interfere with any other custom block that could happen in our website. But of course you can name it however you want as usual. And as a second parameter, we need to specify an array of everything, which this is actually not an array, but it's an object because inside this object, we can specify uh, custom objects, uh, some specific attributes. We can specify methods, functions, whatever we want. So the register block type as a string and an object as two required attributes to specify a custom block. So the structure of a block, of a Gutenberg block, is actually pretty simple. At the beginning, we're going to start by defining some uh, built-in attributes, which are basically all the descriptions and the title icons, the type of category, and everything that is necessary in order to properly list our block between all the other blocks in WordPress. Uh, the other thing that we can do here is define some uh, custom attributes. For example, if our block has some uh, specific text or a text area or a uh, background image or something more complex, we need to specify those attributes to keep track of those. Then we have the ability to specify some custom functions, something not related to WordPress, something that is not part of the register block object, but we can specify all the functions that we want in order to manipulate the data the way we want. And then we need to specify some built-in functions of the register block. So let's get started. First, the built-in attributes. The easiest one and the commonly used are the title, and we can specify a uh, title the way we want. So I'm gonna call it call to action. And then we can specify a description, something like block to generate a custom call to action, and then an icon. And the icon we have the ability to specify in two ways, or we use the dash icons by WordPress, which are built in into the WordPress administration area, or we can uh, copy paste and print an entire SVG string directly here in the icon attribute. We cannot put images like PNGs or JPEGs. It just accepts these two parameters. For now, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna use a format image icon attribute coming from the dash icons of WordPress. And then the last parameter, the last attribute that I want to specify is the category. The category is necessary in order to list our custom block inside the WordPress administration area. Because if we access here and we click the plus button to add a block, you'll see that we have all these categories to list our blocks, the most used, the common blocks, formatting, layout elements. All these categories can be tapped and we can specify where to list our custom block. So in my case, it's a call to action. I wanna list it inside the layout elements. So I'm gonna tap the category layout, specified as a string. Perfect. 
always remember to put a comma at the end of the attribute and this is actually category it's a typo always remember to put a comma at the end of the attribute at the end of a function at the end of a custom method because we're inside an object all the parameter the different sections of the object whatever we define inside the object has to end with a comma we cannot use a semicolon we cannot specify another attribute if we don't specify a comma here otherwise we're gonna have an error so always remember to put a comma at the end of everything perfect now the custom attributes uh, we're not gonna set them up right now but let's just simply create the attributes object which is going to contain is going to keep track of all our custom attributes that we're going to set up later down these tutorials custom functions we're going to leave these as it is because we don't have any custom functions right now that we can define here we need to specify the built-in functions of the register block type and the built-in functions are actually just two the edit and then the save and let's completely ignore these for now because these are kind of complex they're not as simple as this is the edit view and this is what it gets saved in the database it's it's a bit more complex so for now just let's write these empty methods here and just leave them there we're gonna tackle them in future tutorials so perfect now we have our uh, block register with all the default stuff that WordPress needs in order to register a custom block. But if we access our WordPress uh, administration error and we refresh, uh, if we click to add a block and we type call to action, uh, nothing shows up. Our block is not actually registered even if we use the method. That's because we are using a JavaScript file and we need to enqueue that JavaScript file inside WordPress with that specific Gutenberg method. We literally need to register the block in PHP from JavaScript, which it's kind of silly, but that's the way it is. So let's open our file views and inside our ink folder, we have our Gutenberg.php that we created in the previous lesson. Right at the bottom, we need to create a new method function and you can call it however you want. I'm going to call it alicad uh, Gutenberg blocks maybe we can use this single method to generate and register all our custom blocks all together and here we need to use another method that it's pretty similar to the register block type but in this case it's php so we need to use register underscore block underscore type you see it's kind of silly here we have a register block type in javascript which is camel case and then a register block type in php which is all underscore but what can you do it's wordpress okay so the parameters are two as well the first parameter is a string that has to perfectly match what we wrote in the namespace and unique name in javascript so let's call these let's copy this section let's paste it here and then as a second parameter we need to specify an array in attributes but before doing that i want to show you why this is pretty silly so now we register the block type with the name alicad custom cta and we have the same method register block type alicad custom cta if we access our administration area and we refresh nothing happens once again, if we try to search for call to action, not it shows up, our custom block is not visible. That's because we didn't actually register that custom block. As I said before, we need to register this JavaScript block inside this PHP block. It's super weird, but let's do it. So first we need to use the WP underscore register underscore script as we were registering a JavaScript, like we were enqueuing a JavaScript, and the handle, we need to specify a custom name that we're gonna use. So for example, custom CTAJS. Then we need to set the source. So where is the file that we wanna enqueue? Where is the file that we wanna register? And as usual, like we did many, many times, let's use the get template directory underscore URI. And then let's concatenate it with the location of our file, which is inside the JS folder. And our file is called Gutenberg-CTA-Block.js. 
list of dependencies has to be an array but let's leave it empty for now and we don't want these in the footer because it doesn't make sense our register script is going to happen in the administration area so now that we have these a register script with a unique handle custom cta we need to register the script and pass it in the register block and to do that we can extend this list of array, this array of attributes in the register block, and we need to set the editor underscore script, which is equal to our custom CTA JS handle. And this can be super confusing, but if you access the documentation in the register block in the WordPress developer the documentation, look what we have here. There's no mention whatsoever what we have to write there. It's just the render callback that it doesn't really matter. Like who cares about the render callback that we're not gonna use. The list of array here is not updated. So good luck finding some help from the documentation, at least at the current state when this tutorial was first released. So if we need to register a block, you need to first create a JavaScript block with the register block type, then you need to register the script that you just created, the CTA block. Oh my God, I wrote completely wrong. And then we need to register the block type in PHP using the same namespace and unique slug, and then passing which script should be used in the editor of WordPress. Okay. Now we're set. Now we need to hook this method to uh, an action like we were doing here. And also in this case, the action is during initialization of our template. So let's copy these. Okay, awesome. And here we have another little typo. Okay, now we can refresh. Look what we have here. In the console, we have an error. Register block type is not defined. And of course, if we try to search for call to action, nothing shows up. So the register block type, even if we are inside the WordPress administration area and we are using a built-in method of WordPress, is not available out of the box. We need to import it from its own library. So in order to do that, we need to access our JavaScript file and before calling the register block type method, we need to define it as a constant variable. Constant open and close the curly brackets and define the register block type coming from the wp.blocks library of WordPress. Writing in this way can be confusing if you're not accustomed to JavaScript, but it's basically identical to writing import register block type from WP blocks or something like that, but it's just a different method and we're importing these directly with a different syntax. Okay, now we're importing the register block from the WP block types. And by the way, if you're curious about this and you wanna check the documentation of the block registration in the Gutenberg API, there's no mention about it, just to confuse you and uh, just to uh, make you think twice before adopting these new methods, but whatever. Okay, now we did it. If we refresh the page, once again, we have an error. So the WP blocks is undefined, even if once again, we're inside WordPress and we're using a built-in method of WordPress. So how can we define it this way? We cannot define the WP blocks. How do we access the WP.blocks library from within JavaScript? We need to define it as a dependency in PHP. I know it makes no sense, but do you remember when we registered the script? Basically in the list of dependency, we need to say this script, it needs the wp-blocks dependency library. And this is another inconsistency. First of all, the whole shenanigans of including a JavaScript library from PHP, but whatever, that's how WordPress rolls it. But having the library named in PHP with a dash and then in a, a JavaScript with a period, whatever, it is what it is. Now, finally, that we register our custom block CTA JavaScript file and we're specifying the dependencies and everything is registered. If we access our administration error, we refresh once again, no errors are here. If we open and we search call to action, look what we have here. Inside the layout element, we have our call to action. But of course, if we click on it, we're gonna have a bunch of errors and our block is not gonna generate anything because of course it's completely empty. But that's something we're gonna take a look later in the next video. Do you still like Gutenberg? Are you not super confused? 
do you love this approach between JavaScript and PHP isn't convoluted at all, right? Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding, even with Gutenberg.